Thunderdome Boxing Talk. Anthony here. I'm uh, I'm here with Kent from the Thunderdome Group. We're gonna do this uh, this episode of Box Chat together. So what's up, Kent? What's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. How about yourself? Good, good. I'm doing good. All right. Uh, we'll start with these questions first from uh, the members of the group. Um, Tom Stansfield asked, uh, "What do you think's coming down the pipe for uh, Andre Ward?" I guess we'll stick just for 2015, anyway. Yeah, I, I think basically with, with Ward, it's going to probably be a couple tune-ups. I don't expect him to be in, in it with anybody, you know, significant until probably 2016. He's been in. He hasn't really fought much in the last three years, maybe one time, um, and you, you know, and and he's probably has a lot of ring rust, and I think you know. It, he's yeah, he's got a belt, but I, I think he needs to take some, you know, some time and you know get shake some of the ring rust off and you know get get some work in and then probably go after somebody at sixty eight or seventy five. Yeah, I think he'll stay at sixty eight. I heard him say that uh, he's going to try to get into the ring in uh, March or April. So if he start if he's starting off that early, he can definitely get like three fights in in 2015 uh and i agree i don't think we'll see him in there with anyone significant in uh 2015 you know there'll be good opponents but you know like you said tune up fights shake the rust off see where he's at and then uh i'm sure they'll go for something big in 2016 but you know it's it's kind of slim pickings up there right now at uh 68 you know chavez jr is with Heyman. They're not going to fight a Rock Nation fighter. Frotch doesn't have any, you know, desire to get a rematch at this time with um, Ward. Uh, so, you know, what's that really leave him up there, you know? Well, <clears throat> uh, you have, you know, like Andre Durrell and Anthony Durrell, but those are guys that, you know, probably don't, you know, probably aren't really a real threat to, no, the, the, to Ward. I mean, they're good fighters, but they're no threat to Ward. I mean, Ward has, you know, exceptional boxing skill, and I don't think he, he would have a very tough time with either of them. Well, um, aren't the and, Durrell brothers also advised by El Heyman, though? Yeah, actually, you know, I just thought about it, yep. He, he's really, actually, now that I think about it, you, you have them, but yeah, like you said, they're with Heyman. Um... Really, really, only guy I could really think of it out there is DeGale. Yeah, that's that's the yeah. There you go. Okay, yeah. Why? Yeah, I, I, think ca- of that? I kind of forgot they were with uh, Heyman. Yeah, Heyman had so many guys you tend to forget. Like, yeah, really, really. DeGale, that would uh, yeah, that'll probably be the fight for him. Then I couldn't see any other, you know, big significant fight that he would be able to make. Uh, and the DeGale fight that would be. Fairly easy to make. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be fairly easy to make. I think he would present some challenges, but I think Ward wins that. I think he just has more experience. He's a uh-huh. better boxer. Uh, DeGale is, you know, he has, he can box. He has some power. But I, I think it's nothing that Ward hasn't seen before. I mean, uh, other than that, I mean, it's, it's just very, very difficult at the weight right now to make any fights. I mean, Frock seems like he's, he's probably on the doorstep of retirement yeah you know, he's he hinted is. at that recently you yeah. know with the, the Chavez fight falling through and you know uh you know DeGale doesn't seem like that's you know there's any talk of him fighting DeGale so mm-hmm. he seems like he's on you know probably on the doorstep of retirement yeah and if Frotch ends up vacating the is it the WBA or the W which belt I think it's the WBA that he has to vacate or fight DeGale. Uh, be, I think it's the WBC. WB, no, it's not the WBC. It's probably the WBA then. Okay, then it's the WBA. Uh, that would give um, you know Ward, uh, you know, a nice uh, uh, another belt to go after though, because DeGale will probably end up with that belt, you know, because he'll fight in a you know a vacant title fight and probably win it. Um, because I don't really see well that I guess that all depends well I don't know who would I don't even know I don't know there's too many fighters I guess they could throw in there with DeGale but 
you know, that could be a, a unification bout in 2016 if uh, Degel holds on to it for Ward. But as it looks of now, I would say Degel is the first big fight he would have, but I don't think it would happen until at least two fights, you know. And it, I think he'll have at least two tune-ups. He might fight Degel in his third fight, but nothing before that. I wouldn't think so. No, I don't think so I either. I, I just think it's a he's in a really bad spot right now with 168. It seems like the, the major contenders are all, you know, either, you know, inactive or with, you know, Al Heyman or, you know, just it, it, it's just out of his control to make yeah. those fights. Yeah. And I think, like I said, I think he'd probably be moving up to 175 soon anyway, and there's probably more options up there to begin with, and yeah. he could probably, you know, negotiate a big fight up there, maybe with uh, uh, Kovalev or, you know, one of the other champions. Yeah, even a Pascal fight, even if Pascal happens to lose against Kovalev, that would still be a decent fight. You know, that, that, something like that is likely to happen, actually, now that I think about it. You know, similar situation to, like, how we uh, did with uh, Chad Dawson. You know, they might try to finagle something like that. Uh, and, um, Tom also asked about if Floyd falls apart, uh, what about Khan on May 2nd going up against Floyd? I can, I can kind of answer this one quick. Uh, they said that uh, if Flo if uh, Pacquiao fought in May, it would be the end of May, like the 31st of May. Uh, even though they, I, if I was Manny and Khan, I would want to go head to head with him, but I don't I don't think Aaron would do that just because uh, he, he's going to want to take get every buy he can. Uh, and they didn't, they didn't say one thing about going head to head uh, with Mayweather if the fight falls through. Do you yeah, know anything I, I don't on think that? They, it would make any sense to go head to head because you're basically chopping up eyes, you know. Exactly. Yeah. And we know that Floyd would probably, at the end of the day, probably, you know, have more, obviously. Um, but then again, you know, with Pacquiao, he, he'll get a lot of buys too. So it'd be very close, but it wouldn't make sense to, like, chop up the buys. No, I don't think it would either. It'd be, it'd be actually bad business. Um, Sean Bandy, uh, what's up, Sean? Shout out to you. Uh, <laughs> thanks for coming back to the group. Yeah, um, yeah, it was nice to see him come back. Yeah, for sure. Uh, he asked, what's up next for Golovkin if he gets past Murray? Well, actually, I, I put that nicely. He said, what's up next for Golovkin after he knocks the shit out of Murray and uh, still can't get Cotto or Canelo? Uh, that's a toughie. You know, uh, Golovkin's kind of in a bad spot right now. He's kind of just going to have to keep fighting these type of fights until eventually... You know, someone's going to step in there with him. You know, if Cotto uh, would... Say, let's say Cotto would beat Floyd if he fights Floyd. Whoever Cotto fights next, if he wins, he's going to be... Uh, he's going to be mandated to fight Triple G or vacate. So, that could be, you know, a possibility at the end of the year for Triple G. Um, you know... Frotch, he's out. I mean, the Ward fight, I don't think that would happen. Uh, Chavez Jr., that ain't going to happen. Quillen, that's not going to happen. I mean, <laughs> where's he going to go? Yeah. He's kind of <laughs> just going to... No, gonna... no, I mean, he's in a really tough bind right now. Yeah. It, it's really, like, a bad situation. I mean, really, Martin Murray is probably the best guy. He's probably going to get at 160, and he's in the top five, you know? And he's probably going to have to move up and wait. There's yeah. no, you know, there's no way he's going to be able to, like, get a, another big fight at 160, because I don't think Cotto's going to fight him. I don't either. Uh, Canelo may fight him. I um, think Canelo would. Yeah, and we know he would, but, you know, it's hard to say Do if that fight would happen. Fight? You know? yeah. Yeah. Because there's, you know, you know, 
saying you want to fight him and actually doing it is another thing, but I don't get the impression Canelo's afraid of him. No, I don't either. I think, I think if anything, at 160, I think Canelo would get in the ring with him. Now that I'm thinking about it, he definitely would. Um, but other than that, if he can't get Canelo, which I don't think he would have a problem doing, um, well, you got David Lemieux, too. Uh, yeah, uh, that's true, and that's a fight that can definitely be made. Yeah, so you got Canelo and David I Lemieux. I forgot all there. about oh, that. They were they're grooming Lemieux for Triple G. Yeah, so exactly. That's actually exactly, a, and they're both and they're both you know HBO fighters. Yeah. And they're both easy to make fights. You know, mm-hmm. now now that David Lemieux now signed with Golden Boy and yeah. Canelo's with the same promoter, he, 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 those will be easy fights to make. Yeah. Not a, not a real issue. Um, but other than that, out of those two fights, I mean. Yeah, he might have to fight Lemieux until he can, you know, figure out what's going on with the Yeah, Cougars. and I think him and Lemieux would be fight of the year for however long it lasts. That's yeah. going to be one hell of a fight. It's yeah. going to be a war. And Lemieux's really stepped up his game. Uh, he's, you know, he, he he's seems to be taking training a lot more serious and everything. So Yeah, I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. I think... Uh, the losses to Rubio and and uh, to Alcine, I think, really, you know, woke him up to like, you know, how you could like lose everything just like that. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, when he was a little bit a little bit younger, I think he kind of let the, the whole, you know, being a star in Montreal, yeah. yeah, really get to his head. And 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 you know, and they love their 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 sporting heroes, their their athletes up there, especially your homegrown. Mm-hmm. They, they, they really. Sometimes you get blinded by that, and I think that's where he kind of slipped up. But I, but as of late, he's really gotten back focused, and he seems like a much more driven fighter. He 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 seems very serious about it now, um, mm-hmm. especially in the last two fights with uh, with Guerrero and Rosado. Rosado. He looks like a completely different guy. Yeah, he does. Um, he does. I think and, now he realizes he has the possibility to be a world star beyond you know like a Canadian star. Right, right. I think at first he kind of got blinded into the lo- being the local hero, mm-hmm. and he may have not have completely believed in himself, and also he may have also been caught up in, you know, what was being fed to him that, you know, you can knock everybody out, yeah. and I think that was the worst thing that happened to him, was getting into the um, into the mentality of, I can knock everyone out, and yeah. he's really shown he can, he can box a little bit, too. Yeah. I mean, he's still a brute vicious puncher, but he showed he can box a little bit, you know, and his skill may not be, like, that smooth, but I'll tell you, when he hits you, he hits you, and that's going to be a really good fight if, if him and Triple G get it on, and I, I don't see why that wouldn't happen. No. I mean, it, it's a win-win situation for everybody there. Yeah, yeah. Well, it, yeah. I, th- I think that fight will get made if, uh, you know, I, that might be their next, that might be Triple G's next fight after Murray. You know, because they might have no other choice. I mean, he, or he's going to have to take a major step back. And uh, I don't know. I don't see them wanting that. Or Canelo, you know. Like you said, Canelo is always a possibility, too. He wants big money fights. He wants pay-per-view fights. And, you know, Triple G's that guy. He can give you that big money pay-per-view fight. Yeah, um, and I think that's what Triple G needs to really get into the big time is a big pay-per-view fight because he's like one fight, a, like a fight... Yeah, that he needs that fight to really put him over. I think that's the problem. Once they, he can show he can be a pay per view attraction, I think everything will just fall into place. Yeah, then then it shouldn't be as hard to get fighters, because <clears throat> everyone wants to fight on a pay per view card. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, even the you know even you know everybody dreams of fighting on a pay per view yeah. card. I yeah. mean, yeah. no matter what level you are, everybody dreams of that. And, that's that's if you, once you you know once you see a guy that's a pay per view star then you'll want to fight him exactly. because you'll know you'll make the money. Yep, yep, yeah. So let's hope. Uh, let's hope for Canelo. Let's really hope for Cotto, but then let's hope for Canelo. And if not, Lemuse there, I guess, and that'll give us an action packed fight. So you know, yeah, I guess Triple G's set up for a good year, so. Uh, yeah, I, I don't see I don't see how um, you know he couldn't have a good a good year and push himself into a big fight by at least 2016. 
Yeah, first fight is 2016, too. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Uh, Tracy Starnes, my man Tracy, what's up? Uh, he wants what's up, Tracy? to know. Yeah, he wants to know about uh, who we think will be the next uh, superstar or superstars in boxing after Floyd and Manny finally go off into the sunset and retire. Um, we both had we had this conversation earlier. We both thought uh, Crawford is probably the most likely. You know, uh, who do you think besides Crawford? I have a few names. Yeah, I think another one could, will will definitely be Triple G. Mm-hmm. Um, you do have Canelo still. I mean, I think yeah, he struggled a little bit on his pay per views, but I think he's also a guy that's like that that fight with 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 Triple G that could really push him over, no matter what the result is. Yeah. yeah. That could definitely push him over, yeah. you know. And the fact um, that he's willing to, you know, to to take on anybody, that that'll give him a lot of opportunities. Yes, yes. No, and I think, you know, even if Canelo got, you know, lost that fight, it's the way you you lose it. I don't see him just being a an easy out. I no. think I think he would lose to Triple G, but Especially, I don't think it'd be an easy out. I think he'd give it everything he's got, and it'd be a war. Yeah. Just like the Lemieux fight. I think Canelo would even do better at 160 because he wouldn't. He'd be able to eat. He'd be stronger. You know, I I, I think Canelo might do pretty good at 160. Uh, plus, I'm not sure if he can make 154 anymore anyway. No, no, he didn't. He, yeah, you know? he's he's moving. He's growing quick, yeah. and I think he's yeah, going mean, to be. You got to realize no. he's a young guy. You know, yeah. uh, he hasn't made 154 uh, since the Floyd fight. You know. Yeah, and even then he was he was completely drained to even make that weight. Yeah, yeah. So, a catch weight. Yeah, catch weight. 152. Yeah. So yeah, he he definitely needs to go up to 160. And yeah, and I think he can be one. I also think you know Errol Spence. Errol Spence is you know, on my list for sure. And I think, and I think he has, you know, superstar written all, all, all over him. Yeah, me too. Me too. I also think Felix Rodeo is another guy that that has star potential. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't have him on my list, but you reminded me of him. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, Andre Ward, of course. You know, but can he? He got to get some big fights. Yeah, he's got to fight, you know, guys that'll bring, you know, the best out of him. Yeah. That's the whole thing with Ward. He fights a lot of guys that usually, you know, can't deal with his boxing ability, and, 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 and it kind of stagnates the fight, you yeah. know. I think he needs to bring, like, a, a, a guy that's going to come forward and also, you know, like, make the fight, and we'll probably see the best come out of him. That's yeah. always been the problem with Andre Ward. He hasn't had the proper dance partner. Yeah. And that kind of why, you know, a lot of the fights he stagnates and a lot of people, you know, say his fights are boring, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I think he needs the right dance partner. Yeah, yeah. He's sort of like in the, you know, the, the rigging the owl boat. Yeah, true, true, true. He, he definitely is. Uh, hopefully, you know, we just talked about how he's in a tough spot, though, but, you know, 175, that might even, you know, kind of might have to take that jump. Yeah, he definitely might have to because there's no, like like I said, like we were saying, there's no, you know, real, you know, opponent, you know, out there that isn't in some sort of bind, you know, yeah. where he can't, like all the fights, the, the logical fights, the Durrells, Chavez, you know, you know, and other guys, you know, they're, they're, they're tied up with, you know, Heyman. Yeah. Yeah. And we know that, Rock Nation will not do business with Heyman. And vice versa. And vice versa. There's, Actually, there's... Rock Nation tried to do business with Heyman. Heyman wouldn't allow it, though. Yeah, that's true. And and, and I think they tried to be professional yeah. you know, about it being a yeah. different arena. It's not the music business, and yeah. they refused to do business. So what could, what could Rock Nation do? They had to move on. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Nicholas Walters could be a new star. He might do some uh, damage in the sport. Uh, yeah, Lom- I think Lomachenko. he can be. For sure, I think, you know, Lomachenko. Um, so, you know, we have a lot of... We don't have to worry about Manny and Floyd. There's a lot of guys. A yeah, lot absolutely. of guys. There's a lot of guys sitting there. You know, wait. I, I think, you know, depending on how they move him, I think Radovich could be a star as well. Yeah, yeah. 
You know, a lot of guys that in the, in the smaller weight classes, I mean, that can be stars. They just have to get the proper exposure. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's that's basically, I think, where there's a majority of the stars are going to come from. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, you know, we got, um, oh, I'm drawing a blank, you know, uh, who's the guy coming out of, uh, uh, coming out of Russia, uh, up at uh, light heavyweight, uh, he's like seven and zero right now. What's his name? What's his name? Uh, hell of a fighter. Um. Ah oh, man. When did he fight? Uh, he hasn't been on American TV yet. Seven and zero. Ah oh, shit. Oh my god, I talk about him all the time, I can't remember his name. Anyway, yeah, he's another guy uh, coming up in a light heavyweight. He's going to make some noise. Uh, I know you guys know who I'm talking about, so... Uh, well, some of you do, anyway. You know. Is it the cruiserweight? No, no, he's he's a light heavyweight. He's a light heavyweight. Um, Kovalev was just talking about him after the Hopkins fight, saying that he knows he's going to have a showdown with him in a couple years. Oh, I know who you're talking about. The Russian out of Quebec. I don't know if he's out of Quebec or not. Yes, he is. He's based out of Quebec. Okay, he's been, he, he fights. Uh, he's fought on Chilton recently. He did. Yeah. What's he's his fought, name? What's uh, his name? This other undefeated kid. Uh, um, I forgot his name. Page Jeff Page or something. No, that's not who I'm thinking of. Alright, I'll ask, an, uh, we'll get to another question. I'll go fucking find out who Yeah, I right just now. forgot his name off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody knows who Yeah, yeah. To Every, it everyone knows Oh, that. wait, is it Better Beav? Better Beav, yeah. Yeah, yeah he's yeah, based there you out go. of Quebec. He just fought Jeff Page up in, uh, up in uh, Quebec. Uh, oh, on, oh, on you meant Jeff Page was his opponent. Yeah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he, um, he, uh, he got knocked down in that fight. He got up and came back and knocked the guy out in the second round. Yeah. Three times. Yeah, I think. Yeah, the he, only thing with him is, I, I he can be a star, and I think he, he's exciting. The thing with him is, he's a little reckless. Is he? No, yeah, but he, I've only seen a few of his fights. Be in fun fights, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hopefully, they bring him along. Right. Yeah, and I think they have. I mean, they fought Tavares Cloud at the right time. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, so they know what they're doing. I, I have to give them that. They do know what they're doing, and they they didn't just stick them in there with another tough guy. They they well they did on paper, yeah. but it turned out to be you know a little bit tough. But then he got through it and stopped them. But I mean, it was a a, a little bit of a step down from Cloud. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, but it's it's nice to see guys on the come up have those difficult fights. You know that way they're not like pampered the whole way up. You know, and then the first time they face adversity, they don't know how to deal with it. You know, so I, yeah, and it was like, more of a flash knockdown, but he got caught with a with a shot. He got up and finished around, and then in the in a second, he came out like a ball of fire. Yeah. And, and and took the man out. So I didn't see he did the what fight. He had to do. Oh, I, I I didn't see the fight, man. I'm gonna. That's gonna be the fight I watched tonight. Oh yeah, it should be out there on YouTube. It, it was a. It was a fun fight for the two rounds it lasted. Yeah. So. yeah, then I'm going to check out that World Series of Boxing after that. Uh, Joe D'Ambrosio. What's up, Joe? Uh, he wanted That's to up. know, uh, what do we think about was the Rios-Alvarado fight? Was Rios that good or Alvarado that bad or a combination? I think I'm going to go with a combination. Yeah. I do. I definitely do think Rios did show some improvement. He did. Definitely he was in shape for the first time probably in his entire career. Yeah. Um, the head movement I liked. Um, yeah, he was talking about that head movement in camp, and, you know, I just kept saying, I can't imagine Brandon Rios actually moving his head. And, and he you did. know what? And, and guess he what? Did. He did it. He moved yeah. his head like he said he was going to do, yeah. and he looked good doing it. I mean, that's a different wrinkle to his game. Yeah. You know? We've never seen him move his head before. Yeah. So that's something new, and, 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 and I guess it's a good thing, you know, because he's probably going to be put in with a, a, a top level fighter coming he is. up. He is. I already likely, heard. Likely, likely Tim Bradley. Aram so, said today that his, uh, his next fight will be a big fight for sure. Yeah, so, so I'm, I'm guessing it'll be Tim Bradley. Yeah, same here. That's what it looks like it will be. And and but I'll show you tell you this. He he did good with that. But also you got to remember he was in there with with a guy, 
Alvarado who did absolutely nothing. 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 He just he just like he he fought he just like stood there like a statue. When mm-hmm. was the last time we've ever seen Mike Alvarado stand there like a statue and do nothing mm-hmm. while he's getting pounded on? I mean, ever? even if you know you're out of shape, how come you don't at least come out and just throw for the fences in that first round? You know, he did nothing. He did nothing. Yeah, you know, you know my thoughts on that. Yeah. But at the end of the day, I, I think, you know, he just he just wasn't in shape. Um, if if anybody saw the the, the sparring uh, the the shadow boxing video on ES News, he looked terrible. Yeah, it he looked like he was, he was done. Yeah, and, and 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 once the bell rang, you saw he was done. Yeah. He just, I don't think there's any way to come back from that. No, I mean, there is Unless it was really a bad, bad training camp uh, and you just weren't in shape. But I just can't see that just being just not in shape. No, there, it, there's it something wasn't. not there anymore, we saw, and yeah. I don't think he should fight. No, we saw that footage, man. And uh, we were even saying, watching that footage, just saying, I, are they really going to put this guy in the ring? Like, the, shouldn't his camp uh, say, look, guy, it's like, I'm sorry. You've had enough. Like you're gonna get se- severely injured here, uh, and it, it turned out that that shadow boxing wasn't just some fluke. Okay, that's that's what it was. No, know? no, that he really was not. Yeah, shot. She was shot. He mm-hmm. just he just did nothing, and I, I you know, and I, I I'm surprised his trainers who are very experienced in the sport just let him go through with that yeah, fight. Um, I, I couldn't believe that either. It, and it just shows that sometimes trainers, you know, they they they're just as they can be just as greedy. They yeah. don't care about the fighter. They just want to get that paycheck. You're you know, right. you're right about that because they had to see it if everyone else saw it. But you're right; they wanted that pay. They you know what? And it probably was a very good payday. But you know, at the same time, uh, you know, you're there to protect the fighter. You, you have to protect the fighter from him, from himself. Yep. If if he's in trouble and and you think he's the, 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 something is not right, and he's gonna tra- he's training for a fight, and something ain't there. It's the res- trainer's responsibility to say, "No, you're done. Yeah, we're and, not doing this." What about we're, we're, future fighters that want to work with those guys and put their career in their hands and depend on them to be honest with them when it's time to hang them up and tell them, rather than you know put them in there for a last payday. You know that's right. No, no, and, and I think that. And, but uh, to me, I don't know if they train other guys, but the only time I've, I've seen them is when, when they're working with my guys. That's the only time I ever saw them, too. But I'm talking about just in the future, also. Like, if maybe yeah, I another mean, if, prospect if some, out of Denver. young, you know, young yeah. prospect comes along and thinks these guys are looking out for them. Nah, they're looking out for money. That's yeah. what it get the impression I got. Yeah, same here. Same here. Uh, so, yeah, I, I pretty much agree with that. Rios definitely showed an improvement. Uh, it just sucks that he couldn't uh, demonstrate how much he improved against the live opponent. So really, I mean, it was bad for Alvarado for the way he had to go out, but it was it was also bad for Rios because he was going to win that fight. Uh, that Rios would have beaten uh, the Alvarado even from the second fight. <clears throat> but, you know, he's taken a lot of flack from people saying, you know, Rios didn't accomplish shit. Like, no, he, he he didn't accomplish anything by beating someone who was there to fight, but he definitely showed, uh, like we, like you said earlier, he got the spark back. You know, you can tell he's uh, motivated again. You know, so I, I'm looking forward to seeing Brandon in his next fight. Oh, you yeah, know? absolutely. I think he's got the spark back. I think after that Pacquiao fight, he lost a little bit of an edge. You know, you could see he didn't train. He still didn't have it when he trained, when he when he fought Chavez, I don't think he really trained for that fight. But this fight, you could see he was in great shape. He yeah. was motivated. He was hungry. He wanted it much more than Alvarado did. And that's not and that's not Alvar. Uh, that's not Rios's fault. If the man ain't gonna prepare for a fight, that's not on you. You did what you had to do by preparing and coming into the ring and being ready and going in there and doing what you had to do to get the win. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. You can't fault Rios for Alvarado not training. No, and you can't fool Bob Arum, too, because I see a lot of people saying that, too, that, uh, well, well, Bob Arum made the fight. He should have known. No, that's not his not his job to, to hold the, the Alvarado's hand through training. Yeah. Camp. 
Exactly. They, they're adults, you know, and they have and they have people around them that make sure that they do the right that they're supposed to do the right thing. That's not Bob's responsibility. Bob makes the fight. Bob promotes the fight. He does everything to make sure it comes together, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's Alvarado's team's fault. If you want to blame anyone on why. Oh yeah. Why that oh yeah. Performance... I don't really blame Alvarado either because I I, I mean. He shouldn't have signed for the fight, but maybe he was coerced or pressured into the fight, and mm. that does happen. Well, and fighters sometimes don't even realize that they've lost it yet until a fight like this. That's no, why it's no, up to the trainers. They still have it because they're convinced by the people around them yeah. that they still have it. And that's why it's up to the trainers to be honest with them and tell them, "Hey, it's time to hang it up." But yeah, you know, I mean, I'll and tell you, you have this, to though, be able to you know, trust your trainers, right? And I think. At the end of the day, um, Alvarado, you know, with his lifestyle and the wars he's been in, I, I just think he just, it's just not there anymore. No, it's not. No, whether it could be from, you know, whatever, curricular activity, substances, alcohol, you know, just lack of training or, you know, discipline to the sport, uh, plus the, the Provodnikov beating, the Rios Wars, the Marquez beating, uh, you know, and then we're all back to back to back to back. Yeah, that was like you know, five and six tough fights in a row. You can't have that in your career and then expect no, to, you No, no, and, and the thing was, Alvarado didn't have one easy fight in between. No, no, that's what I mean. He had no time for his body to recover, and he was just getting thrown right back in with a line each time. Yeah, no, the, the big, uh, you know, all credit to Alvarado for showing heart and getting in there and not turning anything down. But it's clear, like, the people around him saw him as a cash cow. That's yeah. what it, because it's also the trainer's responsibility, too, when you get a fight to discuss it with the fighter. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I feel like they, they, they basically flushed Alvarado down the drain. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure they told him, you're going to beat this guy, we're going to outbox him just like we did in the last fight. You know, and hey, you know, the the fighter, they, whether it's they don't want to admit it to themselves or they just don't understand uh, because, you know, it's hard. Like, you've heard it so many times. A damaged fighter uh, rarely knows that he's damaged. You know, they'll even have a slurred speech and not know that they're slurring their words. Kind of like the drunk guy at the bar who everyone knows is shit-faced, but... He doesn't know he, he should face. Exactly. He still he's sober. Exactly. You know, and that's why you know, I, hey, I'll, I'll put the blame on his team. I, I, because we saw the video and we said, "What the hell is this dude doing in the ring?" And, right, I remember, and everybody was around him, like hamming it up for the yeah, camera. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't like that at all. You know, and no, now I, looking that was really disrespectful and seeing and that, that the mic I saw in that video was not the Mike Alvarado we know. No, no. And, and how are we going to see all we? What we suspected from watching a two-minute clip is exactly real, okay, it is what it was. And these guys spent weeks with him and couldn't see this? Either they're get incompetent. Get real, get I mean, real. They saw every yeah, single minute of it. Exactly, exactly. Those, the, they're the, probably sitting there saying, like, they probably were sitting there on their hands deciding who was going to tell them, and they did, just didn't have the heart to tell them. I don't know. Or they probably I just hope, didn't care. And I I'm hope that was the case. Care. Yeah, I hope that was the case, and it wasn't that they just wanted that money and were willing to risk this kid's life for that uh, money. Yeah, I hope it wasn't either, but in boxing, oh yeah, yeah. it's always the worst case scenario. You're right. Always. You're right. Terrible, but yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, breaking down that whole outcome. Uh, I think everyone's on the same page with what we saw there. Uh, uh, that's all the questions that, that we chose, but I wanted to talk about, uh, before we end this, I wanted to talk about the potential showdown between, uh, Lomachenko and Nicholas Walters. Um, could, do you think we have a chance of seeing that in 2015, or do you think they'll, you know, milk out that matchup until 2016? I think they'll wait to 2016. They're going to build that fight. What yeah. you have to do is you got to put in Lomachenko in with two two solid opponents, and you're going to have to do the same thing with Walters, I think. And what they're going to do is basically have them on the same card. Exactly. And they're going to basically, you know, present, you know, to the viewers, you know, basically, you know, on HBO, yeah. you know, what what... Walters can present and what Lomachenko can present in a 
fight against each other, and I think they're gonna and and it's gonna be be made at the right time. Yeah. I think you, people always say, you know, we want the fight right away, but it's still at the end of the day, it's still a business. Yeah. And you have to. If they made know, that fight right now, they would lose out on so much money. Yeah. Even though would, I want to see it right now, I can understand where Top Rank would come from by building the hype up. I mean, because the, the only hype around that fight is from diehards, you know? So yeah, you all, at the same time, even though diehards want to see it, you have to get the casual fan to want to see it as well. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, uh, you know, a necessary evil in the sport because you still have casual fans and, you know... And neither of these fighters, you know, is, is an American, so uh, it's not like they're going to have a big hometown crowd to come fill an arena. They're going to nope. have to get a, a, a place that's going to have, you know, probably in Vegas by then, but, you know, enough people that are going to fill up an arena. Right, you know? that's going to have to be on a card where, you know, you have a very strong main event. Yeah. Yeah. Like, sort of like like a Pacquiao or a Crawford, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, something strong at the top. I mean, you you know, that, that's the way, you, or, you know, or maybe even a, you know, a Canelo, like maybe even a Canelo it, fight you know, or something. You know, have to do something like that. Yeah, maybe on a Canelo card or something yeah, like that. Yeah, that's right. You can, you can also do that fight mm-hmm. on, a, on, a, on a Golden Boy card, because now, since Bob and... Yeah. working together again that's a possibility as well yeah for sure uh there's a couple possibilities there but yeah i i, I agree i don't think we'll i want to see it now but i understand i we ain't gonna see it anytime soon um i agree with the same train of thought as you i wanted to kind of hear what you had to say uh i think there will be like you said two fights and then a double header you know showcasing each fighter and then we'll get the fight after that you know on that's what they did with, with I believe, Donaire and Walters, too. Did they? I think they had them on the same card before they made that fight, or a couple of cards, I believe. I think it was the same. I, I, I don't rem- recall now, but I believe they did, did have them together on one card. I mean, uh, that's the standard Walters formula. Chinian, and they had Donaire fight uh, Vet Yaka. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so that's, there you go. I mean, it is the standard formula, and it's tried and true. So, you know, that's, that's, a, that's, yeah. Don't expect that fight anytime soon, I guess. Uh, but I'm looking forward to watching either of those guys fight damn near anybody. Anybody in the top ten, anyway. Uh, the featherweight division is stacked right now. Stacked. Yeah, it really is, especially at in the top five to seven. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's a very deep division right now. It's hot. You know, you have everybody fighting each other, which is great, you know. And it's good when you have that because most of the top guys are signed with top ranks, so you know immediately they're going to be fighting yeah. each other. Yeah, they'll all fight each other. Yep, that, yeah. that, and you know, and you could put any one of those guys at the top. It wouldn't matter. I was going to say the same thing. You can viable, mix and match all names. those guys. You know, mix and match them, I and you can make so many fights out of that. Yeah, and you still, and, and people forget, you know, even though they have, like, Lomo and, 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 and you know, uh, Walters and, and, and Gradovich and guys like that, you also have that Yacker who's still with top rank, and you could probably make a fight with him. You know, yeah. there's, there's possibilities yeah. that you have Johnny Gonzalez who's floating out there. He's you got can a bring belt. Him so in. There's, you can there's bring plenty Johnny of m- 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 fights you can make. Oh, yeah. I uh, I don't know about you, but I don't know if any of those guys can beat Lomachenko, though. I no, think, I don't think so. I mean, know. unless something, you know, unless there's something we don't know about Lomachenko. But yeah. we've probably seen everything, you know, yeah. pretty much in these first four fights, so we, we know what... We've what he, seen him against yeah. Salido deal with a humongous man, you know, pulling every trick in the book on him, and he was able to stay in there, you know? Yeah, I mean, he was able to, you know, handle himself, you know, especially against, you know, Salido, who weighed, like, 160 pounds. Yeah, yeah. And what was low blow to And punched him in the, times the dick the fight. 20 times, 30 times, yeah. You know, so, I, I mean, he dealt with that, and he came through with that, you know, tried and true, and then he came in, and he, and he, and he schooled Russell, 
Oh yeah. Embarrassed him. Absolutely mm-hmm. embarrassed him. And then, and then he schooled the the, the guy from Thailand, who is a tough dude. You know yeah. what? With a mm-hmm. broken hand. Yeah, yeah, really. Though on uh, Algeri pack undercard, he yeah, he so looked he, amazing in that he, fight. He has the heart. We know he has the skill, and he, we know he has the ability. And mm-hmm. he's probably about. He's very skilled, and I think there's not really many guys that can give him. You know, a, a fight right now yeah. out of those guys. I mean, w- with the skills I've seen him display in just a handful of fights, I mean, like I was telling you, I wouldn't even have a problem with them ranking him pound for pound number one if you go by the way pound for pound is really judged. Right, you know? right. You know, yeah, I, I like, you know, I could see that, but at the same mm-hmm. time, you know, he, I think he'll get a Not lot of consideration really once he unifies a belt. Yeah, yeah. Once he unifies the belt, he's going to get consideration. I think he can, he can, he can go all the way and unify, you know, all the belts because they're all within grasp. Yeah, you're right. And I, uh, I'd imagine that's what he's going to be shooting for too. Oh yeah, you know he's shooting. It. Listen, a man who went three ninety eight one in the amateurs is shooting for to, for the same level in the pros. Yeah, yeah, three ninety one and one. I mean, look at uh, Mark Breland's amateur record. He had like a hundred and some fights with one loss, and he was considered, you know, uh, at that time, well, he still is, but, you know, at that time, he was damn near thought of as the best amateur fighter ever. And yeah, Lomachenko just um, smashed had, that record. Like that Kelsey Banks, who had a ridiculous record, had like 500 amateur fights. They thought he was like, yeah. you know, one of the best fighters there, but he didn't really, but all those amateur fights took a toll. Yeah, they do. So, they I do. mean, you, you, you have guys like that, but I, but you see the thing with Lomachenko, what makes him different is he has a style that, you know, I mean, he where has he doesn't offense, really get hit. He has defense, uh, and he has a killer instinct. I mean, yeah, like when he, look at what he did to Russell. Hand, he was trying to do stuff, he was trying yeah. to get rid of his man. Yeah, you know, yeah. and he and he did, and he was trying to get rid of Russell too. Yeah, yeah. He you know, he he had Russell on his on uh, ready to go. Yeah. I'm telling you, if that fight oh, was a did. 15 round fight, he probably would have starched him. Yeah, yeah. He was definitely putting it all trying to get Russell out of there, and uh, Russell was, you know, thought of to be. I mean, no, I'm not taking anything away from him, but you know, they he was a uh, a big name for Lomachenko to be taken on right then and there. Uh, yeah, but I didn't thought. think it was a real, people you know, I don't thought. think it was, I mean, yeah, it was a daunting task, but, like, based on his record, but we knew skill-wise yeah. who the better man was. Yeah. Exactly, exactly, yeah, skill-wise, and yeah, by the by, by the looks of his records to people, when they saw him come in, like, if the people who didn't know Lomachenko, they got a big surprise that night. Yeah, they'll, yeah, people they'll don't never realize he name. had, um fights before that in the World Series of Boxing, you know, he had like six or seven of those fights against guys with similar skill and experience to him, and he went undefeated, so we know that, you know, the guy is the real deal. Yeah, 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 and thanks for putting me on to that World Series of Boxing. Yeah, yeah. Anybody yeah, want to watch uh, some And people good... should check that out, because yeah, I mean, a lot of those that. are pro fights, even though they're, they're, they don't get the the press of HBO or Showtime or, or any of the major networks. I mean, uh, they're they're you know they're they're still pro fights, mm-hmm. and 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 that there's a channel on YouTube uh, that puts all their fights on there. So you, there's a lot of prospects there, so people should definitely check that out. Yeah, give you a good place to scout uh, possible uh, up and coming talent that you'll be seeing on HBO and Showtime in the next year or two. Yeah, like if if, if, one, if a big promoter does sign them, you know, it depends on, yeah. you know, if a promoter becomes interested. But you, we've seen recently that they're willing to sign guys from there that have comp- competed there. Yeah. You know, for example, Al Heyman just signed a guy that had 20, one of, one of the guys he signed has, you know, I know it's a bad example, but <laughs> um, he signed a guy uh, that had 26 fights. In the World Series of Boxing, he went twenty. He went twenty-five and one. So there's there's some beast down there. So yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go uh, do my research on that tonight and watch a ton of fights <clears throat> from there and see what I can come across. I I yeah. I want to see the Loma fights also because I knew yeah, the, I knew he had other fights. fights. He's fighting some skilled guys. Yeah, but you know, I didn't, I didn't know. 
I didn't know how to watch them. You know, I I might have seen a couple of them, but I don't remember seeing World Series of Boxing uh, in any of the tags or channel names either, so... Yeah, what you have to do is just type in World Series of Boxing and the channel should come up, or links to videos on that channel yeah, will come up, yeah. and you could, you could, yeah, I'm sure you can subscribe to that. And yeah, I, I'm You'll get the to. updates from there, and they, they update it, like, when the, when the seasons are going on. Okay, so you hear that, guys? World Series of Boxing. Yeah, check that out, definitely. I mean, I know a lot of people, you know, they mostly watch HBO, Showtime, ESPN, those networks, you know, for the fights. But there's a lot of fights out there on YouTube that don't get the exposure that they should. So you should always have, like, find, you know, accounts that always, always, like, update and just subscribe to them. And, you know, you can catch up and, and keep up with what's going on. Yeah, no doubt. Uh yeah, I'm sure everyone thanks you for that information because I know I did. Um, yeah, we're going to wrap that up. That's 45 minutes right there. Uh, so I want to thank you, Kent, for uh, coming on and sharing your views and everything. No problem, man. Uh, I know the Thunderdome group definitely appreciates it. Oh, I'm um, sure they do. And, yeah. I, and I like sharing my, my information with everybody. So yeah. um, um, I am sure you'll be on again anyway. Uh, is it knowledgeable guy here. Knowledgeable guy. Um, so I just want to say thank you, you know, for taking, you're, you're welcome. For taking your time uh, out. Thanks for having me on, and I'd love to be back on again, so. And you will be. Um, so that's it for this episode, uh, Thunderdome Boxing Talk, along with Kent. And, uh, stay safe, and see you next time. Peace. Peace.